ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden and this is The Leader. The big day is nearly here for King Charles III, who will make the short journey to Westminster Abbey on Saturday for his coronation. Of course, the monarch being the monarch, he has his own secret king's ransom tucked away. But what about us mere mortals? How can you pick the best souvenirs that might be worth a few quid in years to come? For those who aren't keen royal watchers with an eye for memorabilia, it can be tricky sifting the trash from the treasure. What about the veterans? It's the largest collection of royal memorabilia in the world. It, 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 is. it is. It is. Because I've got 12,051. That's Anita Atkinson proudly showing off her vast collection of royal keepsakes. So should you buy some royal memorabilia as a future investment? And how can you avoid being conned? The Leader podcast is joined by two experts to advise on sorting the royal souvenir wheat from the chaff and whether to spend big on a tea towel and mug set or tuck that commemorative coin away in its box, of course. First, let's ask Wiz Selvey, who's the founder of brand and retail strategy agency Wiz & Co, if she's personally got her eye on any memorabilia herself. Personally, I think some of the kind of the fun twists on classic items, like I'm a big fan of uh, Emma Bridgewater mugs. I think they're always really fun and they've done some great kind of king and queen um pairs of mugs but also kind of coronation specials and personally I think all the food at Marks and Spencer's you cannot beat it they're always very tongue-in-cheek the things that they create for special occasions are fantastic so definitely going to be buying some of that for the weekend. Who's buying coronation memorabilia and why? I think there's such choice out there of what people can buy at lots of different price points so there's obviously going to be the collectors that um, always buy memorabilia and I think they'll be buying some of the more classic things like stamps and coins and maybe some of the more classic homewares from Spode or Crown Derby. But also, again, I think a lot of people are going to be having street parties or um, house parties and get-togethers. So I think there's a big gifting opportunity as well. If you're going around to somebody's house, you're going to take something coronation themed. So that's anything from a box of chocolates to some coronation gin or wine. So yeah, I think there's lots of food and drink and gifting opportunities for people. So I think most people will pick something up for the weekend that's coronation themed. What about in terms of a serious investment? I used to work in buying um, at Selfridges and uh, we were very focused there and they still are on, um, I suppose, exclusive products, limited editions. And I think if you're wanting to invest in anything, trying to find out how much the production run is, uh, is it limited edition? And then if it is limited edition, is it numbered? Um, How can you identify that it's uh, unique and for this occasion? Because that really adds value to something that you're going to invest in. So what were some of Selfridge's popular royal items? We had the Queen's Jubilee, which was amazing. And we sold lots of tiaras, (laughs) everything from costume jewellery. £25 all the way up to uh, collaborating with a lot of the jewellery designers to kind of make bespoke limited edition tiaras so that was definitely one of the the funnest parts working with the brands on kind of creating something really unique and special and also then getting in some um some real show pieces as well some kind of historical pieces which was exciting and we also did some stuff with uh dents the glove company which obviously has the royal war- warrant and they had a huge collection of kind of the gloves that they'd had have had over the years uh the ones that they'd done for the royal family uh and then created some limited edition ones that people could purchase as well and how can people avoid getting ripped off it's looking where you're purchasing from um generally somewhere that's reputable um a big retailer if it's something that's branded or the um direct website or shop of the product you're buying from um obviously i think in the current market compared to kind of previous royal celebrations the resale market is now absolutely huge so everything from kind of epay to depop to lots of different platforms that give the opportunity to to resell products online um which can be challenging to check authenticity as well and validate that the products uh, are what you think you're buying let's go to the ads coming up Portrait of a young Henry VIII and coronation chairs under the hammer at a leading London auctioneer. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Now we're joined by Anna Evans, head of sale in the fine and decorative department at Auctioneer Rosebreeze. Anna, what do you think people should keep an eye out for as a potential coronation investment? 
So items for Charles III's coronation that I would direct people to, although I think you'll find it hard to net at this stage to, to buy them, are limited edition items made by British manufacturers, particularly ceramics. So items made by Wedgwood or Royal Crown Derby are affordable and desirable. They make limited edition plates, mugs for occasions like this, but they are already sold out. And because they're a limited edition, they are going to hold their value more. And the lower number in the edition, if you are able to buy, will make it more valuable in the future. You also need to make sure that if you are buying one of these items, it comes with a letter of authenticity, that it is a genuine item by one of those makers. And of course, the condition is always really important with memorabilia has to be in mint condition so you can't scratch the box throw away any packaging has to be kept in very very mint condition what about coins the royal mint is producing limited edition coin sets which again i understand are quite hard to get hold of because royal collectors have been fast out the traps to secure them when they became available. It's the first opportunity to buy a 2023 sovereign coin. The Royal Mint are producing a five pound coin, which is commemorative. It's, un it's an uncirculated coin at a purchase price of 14 pounds 50. Items like that are a good investment. Coins are always a, quite a safe bet anyway, in terms of co uh, collectibles. But again, you have to put with with the with the caveat always buy from a reputable source that has the authenticity and they will be in presentation packs. Have you auctioned anything of royal interest recently and how much did it fetch? Periodically we come across items offered at auction here at Rosebury's with a royal connection of some manner. And actually in the last twelve months we've had quite a few. Coronation chairs and stools are I suppose the most relevant at this time we're talking. Um, we had a coronation chair sold last year in November. It was made for the coronation of George VI and there was a stool with it as well for the same coronation. They were upholstered in blue velvet and it was the first time that coronation chairs really had been thought about in terms of in their design. People would actually see them beyond the ceremony who were at the people who were attending so they were given a very regal look compared to previous coronation chairs because newsreels and cinemas would would show them and then later of course the same design was used for elizabeth ii's coronation the first coronation broadcast on television this chair we had sold for 850 pounds and the stool for 340 pounds that's a very interesting any other items another wonderful example of royal memorabilia sold last year here at Rosebury's in September was a pottery vase made by Constance Spry for the Fulham Pottery. It was originally designed for Edward VIII's coronation, the king who never became king, but the design was then produced for Elizabeth II's coronation in 1953. Spry's a really interesting lady. She was a teacher who then retired and went into flower arranging and made these incredibly dramatic avant-garde arrangements that included vegetables and were not like normal traditional designs and compositions. And these compositions, these flower arrangements, needed incredible vases to show them, um, which she also designed in, in conjunction with the Fulham Pottery. So this one that we sold, made for Elizabeth II's coronation, was in the form of a crown flanked by rampant lions. It's very attractive and rare design, and it was impressed underneath with the royal stamp for the coronation in 53. It sold for £10,000, which is a record for Constance Spry. And I think it was the serendipitous um, timing of the sale in that the Queen had sadly passed away the same month that this was offered. And I think it was an opportunity for royal collectors to to own a piece of something connected with the late Queen Elizabeth's coronation. It was a particularly po potent moment in time. What about older artefacts? Rosebery's offered a 16th century portrait of a boy in July last year um, that is traditionally identified as Henry VIII and it made £5,000 and we believe it's a copy of a contemporary portrait that was made when Henry VIII was a boy, which isn't believed to have survived. And the painting that we offered is possibly the only known picture of Henry VIII at that age in existence. 
which again I think is reflected in the the five thousand pound hammer price it made. If you're looking at um, earlier pieces beyond the 20th century you're looking mainly at portraiture royal portraiture and then items that have come through princely and royal collections um so something that was owned or given by you know george iii or whatever region you know whatever monarch from that time and what's going under the hammer after the coronation we're offering two bottles of champagne in a sealed case that date back to 1952 and 1953, so 53, the year of Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. Um, and they were boxed to commemorate her Silver Jubilee. They've got an estimate of two and a half to three and a half thousand pounds. Unopened box, which is really important. And then there's also a beautiful piece of jewellery coming up in June at five to seven hundred pounds, which is a, a diamond half pearl and enamel stick pin, which is an item that you might wear on a lapel or a hat or a, a tie. Um, and it's modelled as the Prince of Wales feathers. And again, these are items that royal collectors will be drawn to. And if you're interested in owning a free coronation NFT courtesy of the Evening Standard and a top crypto artist Trevor Jones, click on the link in this show's notes. That's the leader. We're back on Thursday at 4 p.m. <laughs>